last 10 days, I've been massively in the terror barrier, to be honest. Um, but last Wednesday, I um, launched a book online, which went to international bestseller status um, on Amazon. <laughs> so, can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I don't know what the actual sales figure is, but it's to achieve that, it's a certain number of sales across a number of countries in a in a time period. So, um, it launched yeah last Wednesday and was a bestseller in on Amazon.com in Australia, Canada, and Germany. Um, so, meaning it went into the bestseller rankings, which was an absolute dream come true. And that was when I started thinking in results wasn't my goal to become a bestseller. It was simply to publish my book or to finish to finish my book. And the, the C-type goal kept growing <laughs> over the 12 months. But um, so that's the end. Yeah, that, that happened last Wednesday. And so the last 10 days has been a, a blur since Huge. then. Tell, what's your book about? Um, my book, which I just printed up, picked up from the printers on the way here this morning, actually, my physical printed copies, uh, is, is called The Art of Trying. And it's um, an intimate account of uh, my journey to conceive. So we, it's not, it's not a sex book. <laughs> <laughs> I've just started to actually realise that people may hear that and go, Jesus. <laughs> Um, it's it's uh, so we had a bit of a challenging time having our children. Um, we're now very blessed to have four little boys, um, but it was a really tough road, and it was a tough road that we went through living in some pretty isolated areas in New South Wales and Queensland. Um, and I kept a journal throughout the years of that struggle, and so I thought. I, I, I want to do something with this and I think this will help a lot of people if I share this. Uh, and so when I came to thinking into results with Karen last year, I'd, it's, it had literally been sitting in my mind for six years, um, but I hadn't made a decision to do something with it. And within two weeks of TIR, I, I went, that's, that's what I need to do first. Um, that's my first goal. And here we are 12 months later. Mm, only 12 months later, after six years. <laughs> See the theme here? <laughs> so you're a mum of four, married, uh, on a cattle property near Gundawinny? Um, so we, we live 30 k's west of Mooney, uh, which is in southwest Queensland, so about four and a half hours drive from here. Yes, um, our property is cattle and cropping, mm -hmm. beef cattle and cropping. And yes, my husband is a, um, his primary role is on the, on the farm. And we run that in conjunction with my parents and two of my siblings and their partners. Yep. Yep. And so I want to take you back to the beginning now. What was your, describe where you were at, at in that time in your life that you thought something has to change, I need to do something different. What, what, went, what was going on for you that inspired you to connect? Uh, it was desperation, <laughs> actually. Um, so, I had, this time last year, I had been in survival mode for, I think, about three years. Um, our boys are five and three-year-old twins and a one-year-old. Um, and I finished work in the business that I had been running when I was about uh, probably seven months pregnant with the twins. And that was the end of any thing for me. Um, and I think that's when I started dying. <laughs> to be honest, um, mm. or when I stopped growing, because I just went into pure survival mode, as, as you do, as anyone knows, with little kids, you're just literally getting through the day. And it was bloody tough, to be honest, having, once those twins were born, um, it was, and then going on to having our fourth, I was just literally, surviving every day, getting through every day. Um, it was beautiful and it was everything I wanted, but yeah. I was not honouring anything 
about me. I was not using any of my gifts. I was purely just going through the motions. So um, about, so Lawson, our fourth, was born in March last year and a few months after that, I just started to get this feeling like there's something manifesting, but I don't know what it is. And I started to just get this growing unease as well that uh, it was like frustration, I think. So so all I'd ever wanted was to, sorry, not all I've ever wanted, but, but what my... I had, a, I had a successful business before, before having children and then our next goal was to get onto the land and to have our family. That was sort of what I wanted. I, I want to be, we want our farm and we want our children and so that's as, sort of as far as I'd gotten since having children seemed like this unachievable thing. So mm. we, we got that and so I thought, well, we've done it. I was so, I was so happy. Yeah. But yet there was this feeling like, there's something missing. Um, but I felt so guilty about that because I thought I've got what I wanted. Why am I not content? Um, so I kept putting it to the side, I kept putting it to the side and kept telling myself, no, this is what you wanted. And I'm quite involved in our family farm. Um, my passion and my part of the business is the cattle side of things and as well as the bookkeeping and financial business level stuff but I hadn't been able to do as much as I wanted with that because of having little ones so I was in the house a lot uh, you know even getting out past the clothes line was mm. <laughs> difficult for someone like me who's an outdoor and like love nature and very in tune with the land it was like suffocation. Um, and although we had help, so we had had a nanny to help a few days a week, we've had nearly consistently since the twins were born, uh, it was still it was still quite suffocating. So, so here I am, everything I ever wanted, but yet still this feeling of I need something more. So I, I'd no, I've known Karen since... I actually remembered where I first met you at the Future Farmers Network oh, no. event in Beef 2009 up I in Rockhampton. <laughs> I do remember that. You were our guest speaker. <laughs> and um, so I've known Karen for a long time and we reconnected at an event in Gundawindi. That's uh, a decade ago. I know. Wow. Um, so I started to follow, pick up on Karen again on Facebook and this is um, sort of midway through last year. Anyway, all those little posts you kept writing about paradigm and it just started to take my notice it take i used to take started to take notice and but i had this assumption that karen's coaching that's too expensive can't afford that don't have time can't afford it don't have time um but until uh october last year when i all of that frustration and anger and resentment towards my husband who could walk out the door and i couldn't um it's basically, I just had a breakdown, I suppose, um, in October last year, um, where it was, I just thought, I can't do, I was like, fuck this, I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest here, <laughs> I'm not, um, I'm not being the best person I can be for me or my husband or my children. Yep. I was anxious and stale and just so frustrated. Mm. So um, I didn't tell my husband what was happening because he was harvesting and um, I sort of just battled through it myself. And But then after harvest, and luckily we got a bit of a harvest, so there was money going to be coming in. I said, babe, I've, I've got to do this coaching. I don't care what it costs. I don't care. I have to do this for me. And... Um, he said okay and not and you said don't go asking for his permission and so I sort of went and said I'm doing it <laughs> um, and so it's everything's changed since then I mean I still I still have the like all of us you still have to face that person in the mirror every day the life circumstances anxiety which is in our family um, so that's a mental health thing for me that I have to manage um, but I have tools now to do that. Mm. And so it, it was like a life raft, Karen. It, it honestly was. It gave me, getting that book in the mail, 
I instantly felt like this is me. This is this is the Benita I know who loves to learn and who. Um, and when I started to think about what I wanted, it was like freedom, like anything is possible. I can. I'm allowed to want more, to think more, to, to do more. And um, yeah, that's where it all started. So um, thinking about the last 12 months, can you share a couple of moments that, so obviously that was quite a defining moment, making the decision yes. that you were going to do it. But then from then on, um, because you have actively studied with me consistently, you know, in thinking into results and you lead the field and soon in a circle. Um, where, describe a couple of really defining moments that were turning points, even in that process for you, where you went, oh my goodness, I'm shifting again. I think back to getting more help in the house. Yeah. It's something as simple as that, to free you up, to focus on the book and to focus on your business. I remember that being quite significant for you. Did, did it feel like that for yeah, you? It, it really was. Um, so I think starting the coaching was absolutely a defining moment. Um, there was also a point, and I'm really interested to know if any of you can relate to this, where, so that when you first start, it's, it feels like a novelty and it's all new and fresh and you're getting into it. And then you start to kind of go, okay, am I really gonna, am I, am I making the decision to actually do this? Um, am I gonna go all in with this material? Am I gonna believe it? Because I come from a family of very logical, very practical, very strong people. And um, so my paradigm's going, something about this can't be right. You know, this is, how is this, why have I never heard of this? Or what, this, so, um, so that was another defining moment where I had, to, where I actually, I really wrestled with it. Like, am I, Am I going to just sort of half do this or am I going to sort of fully do this? Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And um, so that was a defining moment when yes. you really locked in. You went, no, I'm in. And that was probably three months in, I reckon. Mm -hmm. uh, and that led to the decision in at the beginning of this year, again, where I went to Adam and said, babe, I'm... I'm going to make some changes this year and one of them is I'd like to finish my book 